Good afternoon, Barbadians and residents of Barbados. As you are aware, a JetBlue flight which arrived from the United States yesterday brought home Barbadians who had been stranded there since the COVID-19 pandemic was declared and international flights stopped. The Ministry of Health and Wellness received a report from the Best Dos Santos Public Health Laboratory this morning that four of the 110 passengers on board who are all in quarantine tested positive for COVID-19. The four are now in isolation at Harrison Point, St. Lucie, and there are three women aged 53, 25, and 20, and a 39-year-old man. They were among a total of 187 people tested yesterday. One result is pending, and all of the others were negative for the virus, but remain in quarantine. Meanwhile, I am happy to announce that two of the four people who remained in isolation up to yesterday are going home today after they were declared free of the virus. The four new cases bring the number now in isolation to six, and our tally of confirmed cases since March 16th to 96. Additionally, 83 people have recovered. Yesterday's positive results for COVID-19 came after a 17-day hiatus since the last positive case on May 22nd. While this result is of concern to us, I must say that the results themselves were not unexpected and have not alarmed us. The public health officers in this ministry were fully aware and have been advising the government that we should be prepared for an uptick in cases once travel from hotbed areas resume. I wish to assure the public that Barbados is much better prepared today to deal with this challenge than we were in March when the viral illness surfaced here on island. We certainly have more capacity and experience than we had at the beginning. I have continually cautioned residents of Barbados that this public health threat is not over. The bulk of our cases have been imported cases comprising mainly Barbadians. And with the lockdown, we have been able to contain the spread. But the fact of the matter is that once we open up, and we have to eventually open up, the possibility is that cases will return. The good news is that our systems are now enhanced. For example, at the ports of entry, we no longer have to rely on the handheld thermometers to check temperatures, but instead we have installed the thermal testers that will make it so much easier for persons to be facilitated. We have a more than adequate supply of testing kits so that we are now able to test everyone arriving into the island as well as to continue testing anyone who is recommended to be tested or who wishes to be tested in Barbados. I wish to take this opportunity to commend the officers at the best Dos Santos Public Health Laboratory who have now completed more than 6,000 tests for COVID-19 which is a significant achievement for a small island state such as ours. From the beginning, we have understood what is required and will continue to do all in our power to identify, isolate, treat, contact trace, and contain the spread of COVID-19 in Barbados. We all accept that it will be around for a long time or at least until a vaccine is developed. But we are also determined that we will not be paralyzed by the presence of this virus. We must never retreat or surrender, but we must learn to live with the knowledge that this virus is around us. As a country, we must act responsibly by following all the protocols and public health advice. 
An important objective of this ministry is to continue to educate you about this disease and provide you with all the tools necessary to safeguard the health of this nation. I am extremely proud of the way that Barbadians have responded so far, and I urge you all not to relax your efforts. Proper hand hygiene and maintaining physical distance still remain two of the most effective methods of staying safe. Finally, be your brother's keeper. There will always be the vulnerable among us who need our help and our support. Continue to look out for one another and lift our country up in your prayers. That is the end of my statement, and I have with me Dr. Corey Ford, who you know very well, Dr. Arthur Phillips, and we'll be happy to entertain any questions that you may have. Uh, Minister, um, given this development, is government still willing to repatriate others from the U.S. in place? This development has, for us, has nothing to do with the repatriation of Barbadians to this country. We acknowledge that persons who were born here and who reside here have a right to be here. And it is the desire of the government to continue to facilitate the arrival of Barbadians. So it's not an issue at all, and let me assure the country that it is not. Yes, we will always continue to welcome Barbadians here, and as long as we have the capacity, we will more than welcome Barbadians back home. And let me put it um, a little better for you. If there were Barbadians who are brought and who reported that there were COVID patients, we would not turn them back as long as we have the capacity because that is a duty and a responsibility for us to look after our people. And we have more than enough capacity at this point in time to be able to do so. And all Barbadians can con continue to expect that we will be accepting persons returning home. I don't have those details at this point in time. I wouldn't be able to say. Because I, I normally don't even know the names of the persons who were tested positive. Um, how, was, how, how, how large was the flight that came in? Um, how, many, how many persons on the flight? The flight had uh, 110 persons on board, and we tested all 110. Right, but what about possible possible exposure while on the flight? I mean, is that a consideration of being, um, being factored in? Well, as you, I'm sure you can appreciate that on all flights, and there are protocols of, um, which the airlines have established, and we can only deal with what arrives here in Barbados, and from the time people arrive, we also then institute all of our protocols. And that is why out of caution that we made the decision that we will place all persons in mandatory quarantine so that if in the event that we discover that there are confirmed cases as we have now, it is easier to control and to manage and we don't have a difficulty with this. This is just going to be what is going to happen going forward. Mm. Those who tested positive, what's the severity of Based on what the lab um, has indicated and based on the v viral burning, that I think that is what is called. Um, I will allow Dr. Phillips to, be, to amplify here a bit, but it can tell you that uh, what we are seeing there, uh, certainly the persons are asymptomatic, which should suggest something to you. And that is why, for example, when they arrived at the airport and they were screened, that it would not have been picked up by mere screening alone. So, but Dr. Phillips would be able to give you some greater details. This is um, yes, just just to to. Sorry. Okay. Okay. Just to um, elaborate on what Minister would have said. The persons who have tested positive um, were all asymptomatic. No persons had any symptoms. Um, so so there's, there's no issue in terms of severity of illness. It is that we've, we've picked up the illness on, 
on the the swabbing the lab has picked it up but it isn't that they presented with illness and 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 this emphasizes the the importance of our measures of screening everyone who comes in swabbing everyone who comes in and that's the the operation that was mounted at the airport yesterday where everyone who came in was swabbed before they left the airport yeah um, so we're not just relying on whether individuals are ill or whether they report having been in contact with someone who was who was ill. Yeah. Um, Mr. Minister, this is just repatriated. Sorry, just. Of, of, of um, expectations of greater spread in the U.S. with these riots and marches going on, and persons being in closer proximity to each other. What, what, what are now our prospects for eventually getting back to some sense of um, a free-flowing fluidity in flights, etc., um, from a, from a tourism prospect? Well, that is a question that uh, um, the honourable prime minister will address when she speaks to the country, and that is something that's beyond the realm of, of the Ministry of Health at this point in time. But what I can say to you from a health perspective is that we anticipate, and we follow what is happening overseas, but we do anticipate that we will have some additional um, cases going forward that, because this is something that we now have to live with. So that does not, um, that is not an issue for us in terms, we are not afraid of that. What we are seeking to do is to be able to manage whatever comes our way and to be able to determine when a situation is becoming unmanageable. But uh, just, just to get you correct, um, you, when you say you're not afraid of that, you're not afraid, you're saying that um, in terms of your capabilities to manage, uh, 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 the ministry has the capability to manage a wider scale opening of the, of the borders. The ministry always had the capability to manage a uh, wide scale opening because we were accepting flights all the time. But you would appreciate that we have always been accepting flights. The, fl the um, international flights cease, but we were accepting flights here in Barbados. We are, were accepting cruise ships. And uh, what I was saying earlier in the statement that I made is that during that process, in the initial stages, we were nowhere as prepared as we are today, especially in terms of having equipment, supplies, and facilities. You would appreciate, for example, that there was no Harrison Point when we had our first case. It was not ready. We had to do some other things in order to provide capacity. Um, but there is a Harrison Point, for example. We didn't have enough ventilators. We do. We didn't have enough testing kits. None of the, the countries did. We do now. And we have the experience of having dealt over the last few months with 92 um, cases, confirmed cases, and we have tested over 6,000 persons. So we have a very good handle on things at the moment, and we understand that the country has to reopen. And in terms of, I mean, I, I know that you did the testing on the ground as soon as they landed, etc. cetera, um, but um, we saw, based on what I've been seeing, um, some interaction to some extent from the media, uh, we saw frontline in terms of frontline workers, etc. What 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 were the risk factors in terms of exposure to those frontline persons at the airport and those media persons at the time about taking photos, etc. But you're not going to you're not going to contract the media doctors could speak. I, in fact, I think what you're asking me is, is so easy to answer that I will probably do it myself. But you're not going to get the, the virus from taking photos and the media persons who are at the airport were not interacting with people. Frontline workers, yes, had those who had to intera interacted, but following the protocols that we've established, including the use of PPE and everything else that, that goes with that. So uh, we have frontline workers who, uh, who are actually working in, in the isolation facility, like Dr. Ford. 
So there's a way of doing it. Okay. So in this instance, front line workers at the airport will not be tested. Um, so, sorry? The front line workers at the airport, well, yesterday, um, none of them would have had to be tested. Any you want to? Short answer, no. <laughs> no. Um, Mr. Boss, if we may switch gears um, really quickly, we, we are we are getting reports in real time of um, a situation of a, a, on a cruise ship um, where there's a suspected uh, suicide on that cruise ship. Uh, person of the cruise ship out there in isolation, etc. Um, I know that the facts are still coming uh, coming to the fore, and um, there can be no speculation at this time. But it still does throw into sharp relief our own handling of, of, of mental health um, concerns in, uh, for persons, again, with extended stay in isolation, uh, persons with these social distancing um, requirements, uh, and, and, and being social animals. What, what, what um, plans are in place to tackle the potential mental health fallout that we can um, I will allow um, Dr. Phillips to, Phillips to respond to you, but I will just say to you that we offer a very comprehensive response to COVID and to all other things, which includes all aspects of healthcare, as Dr. Phillips will outline. Yes, um, just, just to indicate that um, mental health is part of the COVID response and we would have identified mental health issues for the general public in terms of the lockdown, mental health issues for healthcare staff who are involved in the response, as well as mental health issues for individuals who may have to be in quarantine and particularly those who have to be in isolation. And there are mechanisms in place for individuals to be referred, including through the hotline for, for the general public, um, as well as mechanisms for those who may be in isolation, Dr. Ford can speak more to that, um, for them to receive an, an um, appropriate assessment and intervention as needed. And one of the, the good things about where we are in terms of available uh, technology is that a lot of this has been able to be done remotely, so there's group counselling as well as individual counselling, support for families, etc., available through our mental health services. So this, this is something that uh, before we had a demand for it was anticipated and, and, and planned for and is being delivered as we speak. Yeah. Um, I think Dr. Ford wants to make an intervention. Uh, and on why is that it? Could you, could you also say that maybe there might be a possibility of maybe extending some of those services to, to those persons from one out there on those cruise ships as well? Oh, uh, uh, let the minister address that. Yes, uh, so the Harshness Point facility and all isolation facilities on country, we offer um, a level of support um, in terms of uh, psychological support. Um, and it's, it's a very rigid, rigid um, type program, both for patients uh, and for our staff. With regards to patients, uh, all patients that entry to the facility, admission to the facility, are offered um, that level of psych psychological support. Um, and if anything develops during the course of their stay at the facility, um, then that's facilitated. And that, that can be facilitated remotely, and it has been facilitated remotely for some of our patients there um, um, thus far, and with continual follow-up, um, either by the psychologist or the, the psychiatrist. When those patients are discharged as mandatory, uh, we offer that level of support um, in terms of the psychological aspect as well. And we provide a patient with a number that they can call directly so they can, can, can get that support. I think outside of that, it's also important that we support our staff on the ground uh, who can become burned out, who would have challenges. Obviously, um, people, people have died. Um, um, in the process of the outbreak, uh, and they're accustomed to seeing people all as well. They have to go home to their families. Those sort of challenges um, we recognize very early as part of, of developing the program of management of these patients. We have offered that level of support, so the psychiatrist is directly involved. We have a group support system which we initiated with the psychologist. Um, we all have to do it, including myself. Um, and if it's required on an individual basis, that level of support is provided. And we also provide that, that support for, by the psychiatrist 
um, on an individual to individual basis. So this is something we continue to monitor very closely on our staff at these facilities. As you would imagine, um, there can be challenges um, with that. To answer your second question, from time to time, cruise ships have made requests of um, Barbados for medical assistance, uh, humanitarian assistance as well. And we have been able to facilitate those requests. So if there was a request for that psychological um, support, uh, I'm sure that we would be able to facilitate that request. But so far, we've not had any requests. Yeah, th yeah, well, thank you very much. And just to give the assurance to all Barbadians that this is not a development that is going to have a negative impact on the country. Um, this is something we've anticipated. And this virus is with us. And I repeat that we must not become so paralyzed by this virus that our very way of life just goes through the door. And uh, once Barbadians seek to return to this country, we will always welcome them with open arms. I thank you.